One of the most confusing instruments in the brass family is the French horn, which by the way, contrary to its name, is not from France. It can be tough to know what to get for yourself or your aspiring French horn student if you're just starting out and new to the market, so today, in this video, we're going to be talking about the basics and the benefits of two main types of French horns, single horns and double horns. Stay tuned. Hey there everybody, this is your host Sam here. I hope you're all doing well today and thank you for tuning in. This is another issue of Scholastic Brass Month on the Samuel Plays Brass channel and a sister installment to my review on the King Model 618 French horn. That is a single horn and quite a cool one at that. So if at any point during this video you wanna check out that review, you can click the link in the top right corner in the card. With that, let's get on with the discussion about single versus double French horns. The single horn in question here, such as this King 618 that I recently reviewed, is a standard three-valve brass instrument that is about 12 feet in total length were it to be uncoiled, but obviously for holding purposes it has been coiled into its general circular shape. It's pitched in the key of F, which means that if you play the notes that it is possible to play without pressing any of the three valves, what results is an F arpeggio. This also influences the way that the French horn reads music, in that when the player sees a C written in the standard treble staff, what will come out of the bell is actually an F. Similarly, this pattern continues, if they read a D, what comes out is a G, if they read an E, what comes out is an A. So no matter the register of the French horn, the note that comes out is always a fifth lower than what is written on the page. This makes it similar to any other transposing treble clef brass instrument, except for the fact that it is in a different key and the fingerings are slightly different, meaning that if you're coming off of trumpet, you'll have a little bit of relearning to do. The double horn, such as this Con 6D here, is a single horn, just with an extra horn attached to it. Now, what on earth does that mean? I only see one horn here, you only see one horn here, so what am I talking about? Well, note first of all that there are four valves on this double horn, counterintuitively numbered one, two, three, and four. And what four does over here is it's attached to this thumb trigger here, actuated by the left thumb, and this changes the total length of the horn. Like I mentioned, uh, the single horn is natively in the key of F, which is about 12 feet of total tubing. When you press this trigger, the horn goes from being in the key of F to the key of B flat, which is a little bit higher, it's a perfect fourth higher, and it comes out to about nine feet of tubing. And so you have a slightly higher pitched instrument attached to your lower pitch one, even though the sound does come out the same bell. And that has some interesting ramifications for it. It means more new fingerings to learn, which is, and unfortunately makes it even more different from the trumpet, because the music is still read the same way no matter what. The music still translates to the same pitches, you now just have to learn slightly different fingerings for it. For instance, F on top of the staff on a single horn is first valve, and then F on top of the staff for a double horn is just the trigger. And so there are some key differences that you will have to learn between the two. Interjection Sam here, providing a Sam interjection. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, and you happen to be a new viewer to the channel, by the way, welcome aboard, I would really appreciate it if you could scroll down and check to see if you're subscribed. Even if you're an old viewer, a lot of my usual viewers are in fact not subscribed. Look at that chart. Yes, that is a lot of unsubscribed viewers. I make videos like this all the time, there are plenty already on the channel and plenty more on the way, so subscribing keeps you up to date with that and overall it's a small gesture with a huge impact on the channel. I'm trying to make it to 10k subscribers by the end of the year but I can't do it without your help, so I would really appreciate your consideration here. Thanks y'all and back to the video. For the benefits section of this video, I'd like to actually switch the order up and start by talking about double horns rather than single horns. I promise that given some time this will clarify itself. The double horn is the natural gravitating ground in some sense for horn players. Some players will start on singles, some will start on doubles, but given a few years, the vast majority of players will be spending the vast majority of their time on double horns, and that is because they provide the best general versatility as far as standard French horns go. Having both the F side and the trigger B flat side at your disposal does a lot for you. First of all, it increases stability in the higher register to use the B flat or trigger side, where the notes are a little bit further apart and there's less ways you can possibly miss the target and accidentally end up on the wrong note when you're aiming for a high note. That is definitely a plus, so you want the B flat side for that. The B flat side also helps bridge some gaps in the lower register. There isn't a fully chromatic range between what we call the low register and the pedal tone register on just the F horn or just the B flat horn, and so having both allows you to switch fingerings and eventually make it fully chromatically all the way down your range. And by the way, the low range of the French horn goes extremely low. In any case, the B-flat side has other benefits as well. It's got intonation benefits. You've now got more choices for fingerings, which is a mixed bag as is. It's a little bit of a curse along with being a blessing, but once you get all of the fingerings straight in your head, you have a lot more options with which to make each note a little bit more in tune. The B-flat side also has a slightly different sound than the F side of the horn. It's a little bit brighter and carries a little bit better through the audience, so it helps for louder and brighter sounding passages, and articulations on the F side tend to be less muddy, especially when you're tonguing quickly. 
So now we've made a pretty compelling case as to why the double horn is the primary player on the French horn scene, but that is not to say by any means that the single horn is either useless or unusable. Let's talk about its benefits now, starting at the beginner stage of playing. At the beginner stage, it makes a much more straightforward learning tool for new brass players, because let's face it, while the trigger on the double horn has its many blessings, it really is a bear. It's a headache to learn. I mean, whether you think of it as changing the key or side or pitch or fingerings on the instrument, it takes a skilled musician to know what on earth all that means in context and to gain the muscle memory for all those fingerings. The single horn just simplifies all that, especially if you're familiar with three valve brass instruments that read in treble clef, such as the trumpet or treble clef baritone, for instance. It's a lot easier to make that transition to a single horn than to a double. You can read the notes and finger them more or less the same way, only with minor alterations rather than major ones with whatever the heck the left thumb does. And then moving on for the more advanced players, the advancing players, it makes a great practice aid because French horn technique is just off the walls insane. It is very different from anything else in the brass family and it's really, really tricky to master. Whether we're talking about the fact that the fingerings are played with the left hand or that the right hand is rummaged up the bell or realistically anything in between the two hands, Playing the French horn is tough work, and what you'll find about a single horn is it's a lot less forgiving of bad technique. Once you put the trigger down on a double horn, you can get away with an awful lot technique-wise. Once you let go of it, or heaven forbid you only have the F side on a single horn, you kind of have to nail things a little bit more. Let's think of it like playing darts. You want to have nice, consistent throws. Your articulations have to be nice and strong on the F horn. You want the darts to travel, you know, smoothly and in a straight fashion. You know, you want to hit the notes right on without blipping up or blipping down or falling off. And that is tricky on the F side or on a single horn. And then you want to actually hit the bullseye. You want good intonation. And unfortunately on the single horn, you have fewer alternate fingerings available to you, which means you get to work with the right hand instead, your bell hand. And you get to change the insertion level or the angle or curvature of your hand to actually try and change the pitch of the notes. This is, for all French horn players, ideally a dynamic process that changes note to note and register to register. I certainly am not qualified to talk about such, but in any case, the single horn kind of forces you to do a little bit more of that, and so it makes a very good practice tool in solidifying your technique. You really have to be on your A game when you play a single horn. Now, even for the most advanced players, we still have the crowning jewel of the F horn or the single horn, which is its sound. There is an inalienable beauty about the single horn, as opposed to the B-flat side, especially of the double horn, where it has this beautiful, mysterious, and sort of veiled and enigmatic sound. It's a lot darker and rounder than on the B-flat side of a double horn, which is, like I, like I said, brighter and it projects a little bit better. You'll, If you listen to the Vienna horns, for instance, you'll see they play on what's called a Vienna horn, which is a little bit different from the French horns we're used to here in America or more or less anywhere else in the world. But the thing about them is they are single horns in the key of F. Vienna hornets only play on the F side. They don't have a B flat side to go to. And they produce some of the most beautiful horn tone on the planet. So, I think there's something to be said about the single horn. Now I hear you all right, but Sam, you said every double horn comes pre-installed with a single horn. All you do is not press the trigger and then you have essentially all the same benefits as a single horn, right? I would argue, no you don't. Let's start by talking about the holding experience of the instrument. Once you subtract a row of valve slides and a couple of tuning slides on the instrument, as well as some other tubing, the single horn becomes substantially lighter than its double counterpart. It's a lot easier to hold as a result, and also you're able to let some of the weight float in your left hand because you don't have a moving part in the left thumb. Doubles can be inherently awkward to hold because the pinky supports more of the weight than this space here between the thumb and forefinger, which is a really good place to put the weight of the instrument because it's not put under a lot of strain. And on a single horn, you don't have to worry about being as tense with your hand, whereas with a double, your hand can tense up really, really quickly. And also the benefit of the single and having the weight rest here is that you're more free to let go a little bit with the right hand and do some more bell adjustment rather than just worrying about supporting the weight of the instrument. So the holding experience on the single can arguably be much better. Now, weight and holding experience are not a make it or break it factor for the everyday young horn player. So I will also go over the sound benefits. I would argue that a lot of doubles, not so much this Con 6D, but quite a number of them that I've played, they fall short on the F side. They're optimized to play with the trigger down so that you have all those high register and clarity benefits. But once you let go of the F side, they fall a little bit short of that beautiful, mysterious, and enigmatic sound I was talking about. And they just sound kind of muddy or muffled or hard to push through and not very responsive. And so a lot of single horns, such as that King 618 I reviewed, actually play better than a lot of F side double horns, which is really interesting.
Now, I would also like to address that there isn't just one type of double horn and one set of double horn benefits. And now we finally get to pull out the Chekhov's gun that's been sitting behind me for the duration of this whole video. This is a standard double horn made by the German maker Krusby. Now, this is not only a Krusby model horn, but Krusby himself pioneered what we call the Krusby wrap. How many times can I say Krusby in 30 seconds, right? But what we'll notice about the Krusby wrap, which we see on models like the Con 60, and more notably, even more copied on the Con 8D, which is their professional model. By the way, review up on the card on that one. It's a really, really cool horn. What we see is the thumb rotor right here is actually up and to the left of the other three, and it, so it goes one, two, three, four in that sort of unconventional fashion. But what that means is it's a fairly short walk from the thumb rotor to the thumb paddle here. There's not a whole lot of complexity going on there. The other main type of double horn is what's called a Geyer wrap. It's made by a, a pioneered by a different maker and employed by several major companies now. And you'll see a picture of a Geyer wrap there. By the way, early access, that's from an unreleased review that's coming up. Can you tell me what that horn is if you're a horn buff? Let me know in the comments. Anyhow, the Geyer wrap has its own sort of unique design. The thumb rotor is in line with the other three, so it actually looks like one, two, three, four from left to right. But that means it's kind of hovering beneath the pinky, which is interesting. So they need a big, long linkage arm assembly to get the thumb rotor uh, to link up to essentially where the thumb is in order to get the trigger to line up. And so it's a little bit more complex in that sense. And these two come with their own sets of benefits. The Krusby wrap, which encompasses the vast majority of double horns I've played to this day, has a more flexible and generally darker and richer sound. There's a little bit more core to the sound, a little bit more of a low overtone presence, and you're more able to capitalize on that really dark and enigmatic sound I've been talking about throughout the video, especially on the F side. Uh, and that comes at the cost of some of your flexibility and agility on the instrument. Sometimes the higher register is a little bit tougher to get to respond, and that is the strength of the Geyer. The range is a little bit easier to access, sometimes at least up high. Sometimes it detracts from your lower register to play on a Geyer. But in general, the higher overtones are more present in the sound and the higher notes lock in a little bit more clearly. The whole horn is a little bit more flexible and agile, but less flexible in terms of tone quality. So you generally have kind of one bright sort of sound that you're locked into, much like the B flat side sound that I was talking about that kind of carries over to the whole horn on a Geyer wrap. And so these two really do come with their own benefits and the only way you can really decide which is best for you is playing both in the sorts of styles and ensembles and settings that you usually play horn in and kind of evaluate which one performs better for you. I also want to talk about a couple more extended or rare members of the French horn family as things to watch out for. Firstly, we've talked about single F horns plenty in this video, that's what we've been talking about more or less the whole time. The horns that only play in the key of F or that can be pitched up to B flat as a double horn. There are also single horns that exist only in the key of B flat, as though you were playing on the trigger the entire time. And be warned, these are fairly useless in American ensemble settings. They are mostly, they're mostly used in Europe and they're mostly a soloist and specialty instrument. They're made to be really good at playing earlier classical repertoire such as Beethoven and Mozart solos, and they do well in that sense because they have a more compact and brighter sound than a single F or a double horn, and they tend to not have as much lower register capability, which is not really needed for those early solos. A lot of them don't really go down to the lower register much, but the trouble is you're really missing some notes there that are important that you would have. Firstly, on a single F, and especially on a double, you'd have the fully chromatic range in that sense. So a single B flat is kind of rough to play on. Like I said, the sound doesn't blend well in a section because it's a little bit more compact and brighter. And the intonation patterns are very different than that on an F horn. So like, you're just not gonna blend very well with most sections out there. If they're using F and double horns and you've got a single B flat, by extension, the next thing to worry about is a stop valve horn. I haven't played many stop valve horns, I've played this interesting Chinese one that you'll find up in the card, and I didn't know what the stop valve was at the time, but essentially it looks a little bit like a double horn in that it has four rotors, but don't be fooled, it only has one row of tuning slides. It doesn't have a second underneath, and what the stop valve actually does, you know, the thumb rotor, is since we discussed the changing of pitch by angling your hand differently, when you fully stop or plug up the belt, it changes the pitch a lot on the horn, and so if you press the trigger down as well as stop the horn, it has the same pitch, supposedly, as just keeping the horn open. Open, which is just the same single B flat horn type deal. And the trouble is that's still just a specialty soloist instrument. The, the thumb rotor doesn't actually extend the capabilities of the instrument, it just provides a little bit better intonation for an extended technique. And so that's not super usable once again in America. It's again sort of a Mozartian solo horn, if you will. The last thing to watch out for might look tempting. It's called a compensating horn, and especially if you're a euphonium player, you might go, oh, compensating, that's gotta be good, right? It'll play more in tune. No. 
The two tier tuning slide system with full length F sides and full length B flat sides is only done by the French horn and the brass family and it is the best solution. The air only ever passes through either the F set of tuning slides or the B flat tuning slides. Once you have a compensating horn, you have full length B flat slides on top and little nubs of tubing on the bottom where if you add both of them together you get the full length of F slides. And the trouble is, when you've got the trigger disengaged, you're playing on the F side, the air has to pass through both sets of tuning slides, both the ones on top and the little nubs on the bottom. And this drastically changes the playing experience on the F side, it makes it very stuffy and hard to push through. And so the playing experience on compensating horns is not fun. I've yet to review one, but I have played on one, and it's not very much fun to play on the F side. It's passable on the trigger, but as soon as you let the trigger go, the, the playing experience is just kind of bad. So the main things to watch out for, as I mentioned, are single single B flat horns, stop valve horns, which are still essentially B flat single horns, just with a stop valve, and then also compensating horns. All right, Professor Sam, the bell rang five minutes ago. You think your students can pack up now? That was a much longer and ramblier than intended in-depth look at the single versus the double horn, the basics and benefits of each. I hope you've enjoyed, and even if you've had to hop around to find the parts tailor-made for you, I hope you've managed to learn something along the way in between all of the rambling. If you have, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. If you're a beginning brass player, let me know what other beginning brass topics you would like me to cover during Scholastic Brass Month. There's lots of room for whatever it is that you want to talk about, so make sure to let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sam of Samuel Plays Brass. I appreciate you sticking around, and until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.